WatchOS 11 is getting some new sleep features, including auto sleep detection and auto nap detection. Now, there are some caveats, and I will talk about those as far as what you miss out on and just how well nap detection works. But before we do that, let's just talk about how sleep detection currently works. So to actually track your sleep now, you can do it on the watch or the phone. You will come down and look on the watch. There is an actual sleep app. And by default, you're going to be on this screen. If you sleep with the watch on, you will get your like your wake, your REM, your core, and your deep sleep stages right there on the watch. And then you can also see how long you were asleep and overall the past last 14 days, how you're doing. Are you increasing your sleep, decreasing your sleep, or staying steady? Mine is decreasing. How you set it up is right here. You will set a bedtime and a wake time, and you can have an alarm with that wake time, but you don't have to. So the way, the way I come in here, so you can see my wake up time is 7.30 tomorrow and you can set a sleep schedule. So if I come down here, my bedtime is at 10.45. And if I continue scrolling down, there is the full sleep schedule right here where weekdays are different from Sundays. And you can come in here, set your sleep goal and your wind down time. So the way the wind down time works is so 15 minutes before my sleep time, the watch is gonna automatically go kind of into sleep mode, which turns off the screen and just kind of gets you ready to be ready for sleep or realize it's almost that time to go to sleep. It will also send you a notification letting you know. How you do it is you can come in here and go into add a schedule for other days if I want to add one for Saturday but I can also click in here and I can even change if I want it to be a certain day rather than just all weekdays. I can change that right there. I can set a different wake up time. Right now I have it at 9.30. Probably should set that a little earlier, but it's summer and I don't have to take the kids to school. You can also set whether you want an alarm or not in the sound of that alarm. Now the sound of the alarm might be more of a watchOS 11 feature, but I don't think it is. I think we had that before as well, we might have more options now. And then you can set your bedtime. So on weekdays, my bedtime's 10 o'clock, and we just go from there. Now, obviously you don't have to go to sleep when it tells you to, I usually don't, but it's just nice kind of having that like notification. I look down at my watch, I see that my watch isn't turning on by default because it's in sleep mode, and that makes me realize, oh, it's pretty late, I should probably go to sleep. So that's just how all that works. And there's a lot of benefits to setting up this sleep-wake system. And it really doesn't take that long, but for a lot of people, they don't like it and they just want the watch to automatically track their sleep when they wear it. And that is what's coming in watchOS 11. So you don't actually have to go into sleep mode anymore. But the problem with that, and I'm just gonna say it, if you're not putting your watch and phone in do not disturb mode, you're gonna get every single notification on your wrist while you sleep, which is going to interrupt your sleep. That is the great part of this sleep mode. Yes, it's a little bit of a pain to set it up, but it does give you that option to make sure, yes, you can turn your phone in do not disturb, but really there's not much difference because if you use do not disturb, and you need to wake up by a certain time, you're still gonna have to set an alarm where if you take the actual time to set up the sleep schedule, it's just gonna make it all easier and all automatic. So, but there you have it. That is pretty much how you set it up. It's pretty simple. Obviously, if you've never set one up before, it will even walk you through that process. You won't see all this info at first. It'll just walk you through setting up a sleep schedule however you want to set it up. How does the auto sleep tracking work? Well, all you have to do is just put the watch on. The last two nights I've done this, I put the watch on and I just set it to do not disturb and seen how it sleep tracks. So this right here, this sleep was actually just automatically registered with the watch without sleep mode enabled. But there are some problems with doing it this way. And one of them is with the new Vitals app, as of right now, if you're not using sleep mode, you miss out on info. So I have my heart rate, that's fine. 
I have my respiratory rate that's coming through, but my wrist temperature, I no longer get that if I'm not using sleep mode because the way that works is it knows when you're about to wake up with sleep mode, where if you're auto sleeping, it really doesn't have any kind of indicator on when you're gonna possibly wake up. So it doesn't know when to take that temperature. Now they could fix this, they could add this because obviously there's different sleep stages and it can kind of tell if you're starting to wake up. But as of right now, Apple has decided not to get the wrist temperature automatically if you're trying to do automatic sleep tracking. I'm also not getting the blood oxygen information and this watch can do this. This one's not disabled on here. And ever since I started the auto sleep tracking for the last two nights, the watch has not been tracking this while I sleep. So that's just another item. Maybe this is just a bug. Maybe Apple will add these two features back with the auto sleep detection. But as of right now, you will miss out on that. But I do still get the sleep duration, of course. I hope that Apple improves this. I hope that they start adding all this other information. But as of right now, if you do the auto sleep detection, this will not work. Now, if you're looking at this band and you're thinking to yourself, now I definitely wouldn't want to sleep with that band on, you are absolutely right. This is the Nomad Titanium band. It's amazing, but it's definitely not the band you'd want to sleep track with. If you have the Ultra, maybe you bought it with the Trail Loop band. I highly recommend this band for sleeping. It's super thin, super lightweight, and just really breathable and comfortable if you have the Ultra. If you don't have the Ultra, another great band is this Solo Braided Loop. Um, I've always called this kind of like the sweatpants of Apple Watch bands, just because it is so comfortable that you just don't even feel the Apple Watch on your wrist. Now these, this is, both of these bands, if you don't already have them, are $100, but there's a chance you could probably find them a little bit cheaper on Amazon, or even eBay, I'll look and I'll put some links down below to both of those as well. So now we're gonna move on to automatic nap detection. This is something the Apple Watch has never been able to do. If you fall asleep with the watch on your wrist to take a nap, it just would never like give you kind of any data over that nap. So I was able to successfully track a nap yesterday with my Apple Watch and it worked really well. I was surprised to actually see the data come through I had tried it earlier in the week and nothing ever came through. So this does, it's kind of spotty as of right now, at least in beta one. Hopefully Apple improves it and it's not just a bug. But here I'll have to switch to my phone to actually show you how all this works. So I'll just go ahead and unlock it. And I'm just gonna type in sleep and it will actually take me directly to my sleep tracking. Right here you can see I have my overnight sleep from the other day. But right here, there's just this weird little um, addition. So I can click right here and it says I was asleep for one hour and nine minutes. So this was between 2.08 and 3.17. If you look at the, the overall sleep, I was in bed a lot yesterday because I've been sick, but my overall sleep was still under eight hours. It was only seven hours and that includes this nap. So I've been sick. And if you can't tell, I am still sick. This is not the sound of my normal voice, but I still wanted to get this video out for all of you because I know a lot of you have been asking about how sleep tracking has been working and the improvements on it. Now to actually prove that the watch actually did track it, I can really scroll all the way down and right here, there's a show all data. So this was from last night, but if I keep scrolling down, you will see right here, this was yesterday's and there was a one hour and eight minute tracked from the watch. I also have a smart ring, so you also see that embedded in here as well, but this shows it that it was tracked from the watch from 208 to 316. Now, if I do take a look at the ring itself and I look to see how it tracked the nap, it tracked it at one hour and 17 minutes. So it gave me like an additional nine minutes of sleep and you can see right there, it was from 2.05 to 3.22 that it decided that I was asleep. So mo really close, like they both seem to be fairly accurate as far as what I could recall from when I fell asleep. You know, you could never know exactly when you fall asleep. Now there was another day that I did take a nap and that was on June 17th. And if I scroll down here, you can see I took a 50 minute nap 
My sleep score was great. According to my ring, if you're interested in a smart ring, I have a video on that. I'll put that at the very end of this video. You know, everything worked really well with it. But if I come back to the Apple Watch, you can see this is the 16th. If I move over from the 16th to the 17th, there's no nap information like there was. There's no additional line later on in the day. For whatever reason, the watch just did not track that nap. I don't know if you have to take a nap longer than an hour for it to track. Obviously, that's not something that most people do. Most people take naps. If you take a nap and you're not sick, you're probably going to be like 20, 30 minute power napping. And I just don't know if the watch is smart enough to actually track that kind of info. So keep that in mind. This is still all new. I'm going to continue just to kind of test it when I can take naps. It's not something that I do on a regular basis, but I will try to continue to test and see how it works. I hope you found this info helpful. And like I said, if you want to learn more about this ring, I have a video right here for you. And if you want to learn more about watchOS 11 in general, I have a video right here. Links down below for the bands and everything else you can find right there. Hope you have a great one. God bless.